Well, hello and welcome to worship at Providence Presbyterian Church. We are glad you are joining us for uh, this service of worship on Pentecost Sunday. It's a very special uh, service of worship. Our youth have uh, put together all of the different parts of the service. They have uh, filmed and videoed and recorded and uh, Rob has been putting them together and uh, that will be the service that you get to see. You'll get to hear a lot of different voices and some wonderful music and just uh, uh, some, some really, really good sermonettes. I uh, hope you will enjoy that. Uh, several quick announcements uh, today. Uh, I want you to know that the nominating committee uh, has been meeting and they have uh, taken the names that you all have submitted uh, to of people to serve as officers in the, in the, in the life of the church. And they have, um, they have come up with a slate, they have talked with these folks, and uh, you will receive, uh, by way of electronic mail, a uh, list of those people with their bios. Uh, what we're going to do is have a Zoom congregational meeting on the, 7th, uh, yes, on the 7th of June, Sunday the 7th of June at 11 o'clock. Uh, you will get a couple of more notifications about this and uh, what we're asking for you to do is to read through that list of nominees, read through their bios, and just be aware of the folks that are being put forward uh, to serve as elders and deacons in the church. That congregational meeting, we will have uh, the nominating committee uh, make their report, and if the way is clear, we will go on to a vote uh, to vote those people into office. So thank you for that. Also, the, uh, the regathering task force, uh, as it is now called, uh, has, uh, has met and they will meet again this next Tuesday. Uh, they, have, um, they have read through significant uh, material. Uh, this is the folder of all the different, <laughs> all of the different pieces of information that they have read through. Uh, Tamara Green has done a beautiful job of summarizing that into five categories. And uh, they are working diligently to see what it would be like for us to be able to regather for worship and for other events. You'll be hearing more from that committee as well. I want to wish a happy birthday to Doris Ray. Uh, today is her birthday, and I uh, hope she has a marvelous day and many more birthdays. Um, and uh, just to remind you as well, our office hours are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we do ask that if you come up to the office, Tricia will be there, but uh, please do practice social distancing, um, and uh, Tricia will be wearing a mask. Uh, don't let that offend you. That's, uh, that's uh, precautions that we need to take. And as I mentioned, today is Pentecost Sunday. Um, you know, Jesus had promised that the Holy Spirit, this gift from the Father, would come and said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And then the day of Pentecost actually comes and, and it, it occurs on the Feast of Weeks, uh, which is... Uh, uh, which happens during the Spring Barley Festival. It's actually 50 days uh, after Passover, and the tradition was that uh, the law was given on this particular day. So the law is given uh, in the Old Testament on this uh, Feast of Weeks, this Pentecost day, and now the Spirit comes. The disciples are all together in one place. And then suddenly from heaven there is a rush of violent wind and there may be some allusion to that wind that swept over the waters in the very beginning in Genesis 1. But uh, divided tongues of fire came and appeared among them and they rested on each one of them and they were filled with the Spirit and they began to speak in languages. Languages. This is God wanting God's good news, God's gospel of salvation to go out to all the earth. And here these first disciples, this early church is given the gift of languages so that folks might hear this good news in their own native language. Now I wish that I had had the gift of languages when I took Spanish and when I took Latin and when I tried to speak Portuguese in uh, Brazil, but uh, God did not see fit uh, to uh, give me that gift at that time. But God does want God's good word out, out to the community. He calls us to be witnesses to the good news of Jesus Christ, to this kingdom that Christ has brought in. And God does give gifts through the Spirit. 
a whole variety of gifts. Yeah, some of those gifts are proclamation and some are languages and people who speak in other languages and some are the gifts of being able to, to work with mechanical things and put things together and some are the gifts of gardening and some are the gifts of companionship and, and they range, they run the full gamut. But this is the work of God's Spirit in God's church. The day of Pentecost is the birthday of the church. And so it is fitting that we sing happy birthday. So, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear church and body of Christ and people of God and communion of saints and witnesses to the world. Happy birthday to you. Amen. And enjoy worship. Amen. This is a bittersweet time of year for me. Bittersweet because I'm thrilled that some folks are going to be moving on and bitter because some of these folks are going to be moving on. Uh, it's that time of year to recognize our graduating seniors. For the last seven years, I've had the honor of watching these young people grow and I was able to be a, just a small part of their faith journey. From mission trips to here at Montreat to Sunday school and youth group, just to, or just to chat with them for a few minutes after church. I was truly inspired by them. I was inspired by their faith, their dreams and goals, and their love for their community, the world, and their love for God. This group of students are unlike any other senior class in history. They've had the rug pulled right out from under them during one of the most important times of their lives. They have missed out on their final prom, sports seasons, performances, and most important, graduation ceremonies yet their faith has not wavered. They know that God has a plan for them. Even though they may have missed this small but important part of their life, they have faith and trust in God. They realize that this is not a step back, but an opportunity, an opportunity to serve and to see where God takes them. Parents, we know how proud you are of your graduates. We are also very proud of them. We look forward to seeing where our great compass leads them. They have been a big part of Providence. Their leadership, sense of humor, curiosity, and playfulness will be missed. But their new friends, classmates, co-workers, will see the light and love of God on them and through them. We know they will be a blessing to whomever and wherever they go. Here are the graduating high school class of 2020. Mac Jones, Andrew Castellano, Paige Burke, Ridge Hardy, Sterling McDonald, Riley Carlson, Roman Peace, Matthew Seaman, Megan Sports, Juliet Downing, Catherine Jadaro, and William Dixon. Congratulations. We're proud of you.
Our theme for youth group this year has been God is our compass. Isaiah 6 verse 8 says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. As we enter into worship today, let us remember in order to live by God's word, we must listen to him calling us. We have to understand what we are hearing, decipher the message, and act on it. God will bless our lives with direction, meaning, and purpose as we hear his voice and follow him. God is our compass. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather today virtually. Although we cannot be together in person, we are always joined through the Holy Spirit. We praise you for our goodness and generosity and preserving us through both good and bad times. Open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. We thank you for hearing our prayers, nourishing us with your word, and encouraging us with your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's psalm reading, I will be reading a couple of psalms that relate to you Sunday. The first one is Psalm 56, 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Psalm 70, 71, 17 through 18 says, Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. Psalm 100 says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Dear Lord, we know you ask us to trust you with all our fears and doubts, but sometimes it's hard, especially when it seems as though you're working against us. We ask for forgiveness in doubting your plan and losing faith in you. We confess that there are days when we question you and your everlasting love. Why would our God make these horrible things happen, we ask? The truth is we do not know. All we know is that you love us and are doing this for, for a reason. Help us to continue having faith in you and give us strength when trusting in your plan. Amen. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Sisters and brothers in Christ, hear the good news. Through God's covenant in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Gracious God, in you are hidden all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 
Hi, I'm Paige Burke, and this is my senior sermon. I joined Providence Presbyterian Church when I moved to Charlotte from California in 2014. If I'm being honest, I really wasn't the most excited to go in the beginning. I grew up in Tribuca Presbyterian Church, going to multiple summer camps, being a kiddo in VBS, and eventually being a VBS leader, and much more. So leaving that all behind to start the next step in my journey with God seemed really scary. I still remember my first time attending a youth group. It was November 2nd, my 13th birthday. My mom dropped my brothers and I off with cupcakes and wished us luck. I was glued to my brother's sides the whole time and cried after everyone sang happy birthday to me because I was so embarrassed. But little did I know that those people who I was so scared to meet would end up being the people that I'm lucky enough to call my second family. No matter where we all are in life, I know that we have each other's backs. I do have to admit that my first year or two attending trips and such, I wasn't necessarily taking it seriously. I didn't pay much attention to the messages, and I think I was there for the social aspect more so than the religious one. In eighth grade, I was really struggling with my mental health, and in turn, I struggled with what I believed in. I thought that if God was there, why would he be putting me through these things? Why would I be struggling so much? I attempted to take my own life, but looking back now, I see that God had big plans for me. While in the hospital, I had the opportunity to do devotions with the nurses every single day. That small but mighty presence of God was a huge reason I pushed myself to get better. After getting out of treatment, I knew I had a huge road ahead of me. It wasn't going to be easy, but knowing that someone was out there rooting for me made it possible. I attended youth group for the first time since everything happened, and I was met with some of the best embraces I've ever had. There was some awkwardness, yes, but everyone was so excited to have me back, and that felt good. I decided that with Joanna, I wanted to tell everyone what happened. I don't really know why to this day I had such a pressing urge to tell my story, but I'm very glad I did. With the tears and uncomfortable feelings, I was met with so much love and encouragement. I truly don't think I would have made it this far without the youth group and people like Dale. I know that whatever was going on in my life that week, I had a couple hours of relief every Sunday night. A few years ago, I attended a mission trip in the Dominican Republic. Putting aside the hospital trips and the rough weather, I still think that experience was amazing. Seeing how God worked through the people there who had nothing but also had everything at the same time because of God hit home. Knowing that no matter who you are, what choices you make, if you stray away from him, he is still there with open arms. At my last middle school mantra, I was still really struggling. I decided to share my story with a couple of kids and leaders in the group and then ended up connecting with a first year leader named Haley. We bonded over a semicolon tattoo, which seems very simple, but in reality, it stands for so much. She wrote down a few verses for me, which I have carried in my wallet ever since. The first is Isaiah 41:10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. He is there. If I need someone to talk to, if I have worries, or even if I have something I'm thankful for, I always have him to go to. The second one is Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. It was not my time. I know that now, and he truly does have great plans for me. And knowing that whatever is going on right now, I can get through it because of him. I think something we all yearn for is acceptance. Mainly from other people, but in the end, accepting ourselves. And it's really hard, accepting all the bad with the good. But knowing that we all have this shared connection and that God can help us do it is amazing. 
he created us every little quirk every little freckle and he helps us see each other and ourselves for who we are this may sound cliche but thank you god for putting all these amazing people in my life who helped shape me into the person i am today I am scared once again to leave this group behind and start yet another step in this journey of faith, but he is with me and the youth group is with me, so I know I can do it. Thank you. As a graduating senior, I would like to express my gratitude to you all, the congregation of Providence Presbyterian Church, for everything you have done to enable me to become the person I am today. And above all else, I would like to thank God for the experiences I've had as a member of this congregation that will strengthen me as I go forward into life. As I prepare to enter a new chapter of my life, I've spent a lot of time reflecting on the experiences that have brought me here. I was baptized at Providence at age six. Even at this young age, I distinctly remember feeling the power of a congregation pledging its support to my spiritual growth and personal development. Other experiences followed. I participated in the excitement of BBS and the yearly Christmas pageant. Going to homecoming every year reminded me of Providence's strong and supportive community. My time in confirmation class offered a valuable opportunity to examine my beliefs and express them in a statement of faith. I was fortunate enough to attend the Rocky Mountain mission trip this past summer, which was very impactful, both in service to others and intrinsically as a personal experience. Additionally, I feel very blessed to have had the opportunity to give back to the congregation with the building of an outdoor worship structure as my Eagle project with Troop 119. I hope it will be used for many years to come. Through all of these experiences, I have learned to trust in God as my source of strength and guidance through all sorts of different challenges and obstacles. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, the prophet says, As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. Through the community of believers at Providence, I have experienced the hand of God that has helped to guide me towards positive growing experiences, both within and outside of the life of the church. So as I go out to face the new challenges my future will bring, I am strengthened by my faith and the knowledge that I am supported as I always have been by the people of Providence. As the prophet states in 2 Samuel, it is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. I am thankful to God for the shield that has protected me and strengthened me to this point. And I pray that I will make a good ambassador of the faith as I go forward at NC State and to the life adventures that lie beyond. Hello. Um, hi, my name is Juliet Downing. I am a former senior this year. I graduated this past weekend, which is super exciting. And I'm really excited to be able to talk to you today. Um, my senior class, obviously, is the first class that has been through something like this, a global pandemic, kind of a big deal. But um, I'm going to share with you guys something, some scripture that has really helped me in my journey outside of the pandemic and within the pandemic as well. Um, so I'm going to be looking this way, but you can follow along. Follow along. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 12 through 24. And these are the final instructions from God, kind of like a way to live our life. So, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, Warn those who are idle and destructive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. So I really like that. That's something that has always stood out to me and something that I kind of hold by, especially the 
rejoice always, pray continually, because that is something that I've needed a lot over the past couple of months in quarantine while social distancing. And it's hard. It's, it's hard to do. But the way I live my life, personally, is I'm always having a prayer with God in my head. I'm always having a conversation. And even though I might not have a verbal answer, it brings me peace to know that somebody's listening, somebody cares about what I have to say. And that's that's really important. And that's sometimes a hard thing to remember. But he is with you always. And that first part is something that more recently I've had to hold close by me. And it's, you know, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. And that's kind of hard. That is kind of hard. Because you know, make sure nobody pays back wrong for wrong. I see tons of people, whether it be on social media or I have classmates and even teachers that aren't following these social distancing guidelines or really doing much of anything, even wearing a mask out in public, which seems kind of crazy to me because, you know, there's a global pandemic and I, nobody is safe from it. Nobody's immune that we know of. So it amazes me that people aren't taking care of themselves and others by just staying home. So I've had to keep reminding myself that all I can do is encourage them. All I can do is um, warn those who are idle and disruptive. And I can't pay back wrong for wrong. Just because they're doing it doesn't mean I'm doing it. I can do it. So in my constant conversation with God in my head, I'm always having to remind myself that he wants what's best for us and he can heal and he is a healer and he can do miracles but he's not going to heal those who are going against his wishes and his wishes are to um, honor the government honor the laws set in place by our country and even says with that said I do want to talk a little bit about my experience and what it's been like being an at-home student and doing everything virtually and how that's affected me. Because it has, it's affected me quite a bit. Um, for one, if you had asked me like what I would be doing right now, and you had asked me that six months ago, I would tell you that I would have graduated, had a ceremony, I would have had my senior prom, I would have been getting back from my senior trip to Costa Rica, and I would have been celebrating with my friends and family. And be very very happy and that's kind of true I am very happy right now but it wasn't easy to get to this point I went from going to school all day and working until late at night and that was my whole schedule my whole schedule was busy I was out I was doing things I was with my friends which was great however obviously that all changed and when it did change I didn't expect for it to change for as long as it did I didn't adjust my lifestyle. I didn't change the way I expected things to be because I was waiting for them to go back to normal. However, I soon realized that I have to find a new normal. And my new normal is keeping myself mentally and physically healthy while being at home and not being able to see people and doing things online, which seems kind of normal for my generation, but it really isn't because I love my in-class classes. I love seeing my classmates and my teachers, going to my school chapels. All of those things were really important to me. And now everything was virtual. So we had our Zoom classes and me and my friends even met individually on Zoom, which was cool, but it was different. And now as things are starting to open up, I have seen my friends. I did have a graduation ceremony. However, it was outdoors and we were all in our cars and it wasn't like we got to hug and kiss each other goodbye. So it was a little disappointing, but as I adjust to my new normal, it makes it a whole lot easier. And God of peace sanctify me through and through this whole spirit, soul, and body. And he is kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can't blame him. Gotta trust him. He's there. Those are the things that I've really kept with me over the past few months. Um, I really appreciate you guys letting me speak and Dale giving me a platform to be able to 
explain what I've been through over the past couple months and my experiences. Um, thank you so much. And bye. <laughs> Sophie, today's our day to do the children's sermon. What should we do it on? Um, I don't really know. Well, we need to figure it out soon. Yeah, but while we're thinking about it, I do have one question. What's that? One of my friends showed me this, and I'm not really sure what it is. That's a compass. It points you in the right direction to find where you're going and helps hikers when they get lost. Oh, well, that kind of sounds like God. What do you mean? Well, he's always there trying to point us in the right direction and helping us out of our problems. Wow, I guess you're right. God really is like a compass. I guess that's why our youth theme this year is God is our compass. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just confused right now. If he's trying to help us out of our problems, why did he give us the coronavirus? You know, I think that's a question a lot of people are struggling with right now. When I have a question like that, I turn to my Bible. It has a lot of answers to my questions. For example, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, it says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This reminds me that God has a plan, and even though it might not seem clear right now, he's doing his best to make the world a better place for all of us. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, We need to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for us. I think it's important for us not to focus on all the negative things happening right now. Sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the drama and forget about the good things. What's something you can be thankful for right now? Well, I guess I'm thankful that all my family members are healthy and that the world is slowly recovering from this. See, that's great. Sometimes we just need to remember that God has a bigger plan and in the end, he really is looking out for us. Well, I guess we did end up finding something to do for our lesson. Yeah, good job. Have a good week, Bye. everyone. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the covenant of the church. 
We pray that even though we are not together, you watch over us and guide us through the tough times we are all facing. We pray that you keep us safe and watch over us while we are in quarantine. We pray for the city of Charlotte. We pray that you keep everyone safe. We pray that you watch over the people experiencing homelessness, people who are starving, and people going through drug addiction. We pray that you will give these people your light and guide them to do right. We pray for the United States. We pray that you will guide our leaders to make wise decisions regarding COVID-19. We pray for the families of the victims of the coronavirus. We pray for the victims of the coronavirus. We pray that you will heal in the victims of the coronavirus and give them your courage and hope that they need desperately right now. We pray that you will be with the nations of the world and guide their leaders to make appropriate decisions. We pray that you will heal everybody from the coronavirus and that we will be able to return to our normal life as soon as possible. We pray that you will be right beside them and guide these people to stay strong and healthy. We pray that you will teach us how to be more attentive to the coronavirus. We pray for the nurses and doctors who have risked their lives to deliver a safe cure vaccine for everyone. We pray that you will guide everyone and because your world is holy and because God, you are our compass. And even though we are physically distanced, let us remain spiritually together by praying together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with the outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to others. Go out to follow Jesus in the world to show and tell the good news of God to everyone.